I was trying to see if it would tell me that I was live. And it didn't. <laughs> Not sure why I'm surprised. Good morning, everyone. Hope you all are doing well today. Hi, Tina, Patricia, Stephanie, Julie. Thank you all for saying hello and sharing. Oh, Denise, that's so nice. Thank you. Hey, just in case you missed me, I was live yesterday on YouTube as well. So if you feel like getting on there and watching me, I appreciate it. Hey, Christina, Sharon, Donna, Yvonne. Oh, it's snowy. Holy cow. Look, I'm wearing long sleeves today. It is really chilly here. It was like 50 this morning when we woke up. So we went from summer last week to fall and now it's pre-winter. So that's Maryland for you. Crazy weather. <laughs> so just in case you missed it yesterday, I did do, a, I finished up finally my um, one sheet wonder that I think I cut up about a year ago. <laughs> How sad is that? But these are some of the cards that I made. There's a YouTube video on. And we finished a couple of them while we were, whoops, working live. And then there's a little one, a little mini card, and then a fun fold card. I still didn't finish that, but I made those yesterday. So these will be some of my thank you cards going out for orders that people place in the month of October. So hopefully, I could be great if I had enough uh, orders, I could send out all these cards to everyone. And I wanted to share a couple things with you. So I did get my gouache. I didn't think the tube would be this tiny, but I think a little goes a long way, <laughs> hopefully. So this was the one that I wanted to use to do the splatter. So I'm gonna try that. I'm not gonna do it today, but I'm gonna try this out. This would be for making, like if you had splatters on the card for like a galaxy star card or any kind of card that had stars and night sky, something like that. So I got that. And I finally got my Purple Posy ink refill. So I'm super excited. So Purple Posy is available in all its glory. They finally got the stamp pad. Apparently it was really bubbly. I have my original one that I ordered. So maybe it was bubbly, but I didn't... Um, <laughs> I wanted to keep it so I guess I just never said anything I didn't realize it was bubbly so I got the refill for that so that's available if you'd like to get it I also while I was at it I got a refill for my stamp cleaning pad so I'm just gonna go on record real quick as saying this is one of the coolest products new products that we have and it looks awful because it was if you can see down there it was really white when I first got it it doesn't look pretty I don't think it needs to be re-inked but I always like to when I get the pad get the re-inker it cleans your stamps so so well especially even stamps that are old if you have like an old stamp that you either haven't used in a while or a rubber and I've used it for photopolymer I think it makes them stamp a little bit nicer but what I usually do is when I'm cleaning my stamp with this because it does say you should rinse it with water afterwards what I will usually do is I will clean it with this and then where is it it's in this stack here it is and then I will just wipe it off with my um chamois afterwards because these are usually pretty wet if you wanted to you could absolutely also go to the sink and just rinse it under the sink but since these are pretty wet I kind of figured they're pretty pretty good to do it so I usually will clean it with that and then wipe it off with this and then use it again but I did get the refill for that I need to put that somewhere speaking of but this is one amazing cleaner and also don't eat it as if we needed something to say that I don't know I guess that's for security purposes crazy so I thought today I have a whole stack of stamps and stuff here I thought today what we could do is I have my rectangles here and I also have my um, stitched nested because those are double stitched as well so I thought what we could do is we're gonna try to make four cards now I say four, but it could end up being six because what I want to do is I want to do two cards that we use DSP and then a plain background. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to cut out one with a DSP and that way we could use like half for one, half for the other, and then maybe the same with a rectangle. And then one I want to do just with a... Um, like a white or a cardstock background and then kind of flop swap them together so I think that might be a good combination for those and then I kind of figured if we needed to add something we could do these two backgrounds I need to get the um what's it called the chicken wire I don't know if it's called chicken wire or not but the the chicken coop 
background stamp. I need to order that. I need to remember that when I go downstairs. I thought we could also use um, Gather Together because I want to show you something cute I did for another thing of kind of like a, a stamp and a stamp, if that makes sense, or a punch, a die cut in a punch, if that makes sense. And then I kind of just grabbed a few stamp sets that, depending on if we have something that's a little boring, maybe we could stamp and die cut and add them together. So I also thought we could use um, maybe the tiny keepsakes if we needed to add some color to something. So I have several different things. I even brought out the subtle embossing folder just in case things get really sad and I need to spice it up. So what I'm going to do, let me move this out of the way and put this over here. Hopefully that won't be too much in the way. So what I'm going to do is I just have to pull my um, die cutting machine around because for some reason I forgot that. So give me one sec. Also working on, um, for school, <laughs> sight words. So I just did these on little note cards. And then I used my um, crocodile to punch a hole in them because you can adjust where it is. So we always love doing that, and always with school fun stuff. Let's see. I just want to move these couple of things out of the way. And once again, like a ding dong, I started the washing machine. And I have one of those washing machines that's like the super fast cycle. So when it really kicks in, it's really loud. So I just had to shut the door so we didn't have to listen to that. So. So good, you need ideas for birthday cards. You could do this for pretty much anything. Um, you can make this Christmas, we can make it fall. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one that's more of like a fall and then maybe one that's more of a winter. So even if I don't get to finish them all, because I am supposed to have lunch duty today, if I don't get to finish them all, I will finish the rest of them and then um, just finish posting them afterwards. So can someone forget a big shot? No. It's right here next to me. I just forgot that I needed to use it. And if you saw the floor of my craft room, you would understand why I had to make a space to drive it through this very narrow thing. My craft room sometimes looks like episode of Hoarders. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but it's true. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start by doing some... Um, die cutting with these. So I'm going to do, just to get started, I'm going to do one piece of each. So I'm going to do one with the come together. And I think I'm going to do one, I'm trying to think what I wanted to use. Come together. Did I grab anything? I want to grab something that's like not necessarily Christmassy. Like it's a Christmas paper, but you could use it for not Christmas. So I want to take a look and see if any of these might work with these are a little, these are kind of red and greeny. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip wrap with plaid. Let me look at brightly gleaming because these have some that could kind of go either direction. I think, let's see, this one could kind of go either way. The stripes even. All right. So I'm going to use one of these. So I'm going to do this brightly gleaming with one. And then the other one we'll do come together. And what I was trying to think is of like what stamp set I could wrap in with it, which is why I was kind of hemming and hawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one from here. I made a super cute card for a little um, friend of Christian's. And I used some of the old glimmer paper. I made her actually a mermaid card out of um, with the old mermaid stamp set that we have. So hope she liked it. Oh, here's another stitch shape that I kind of did partial. Remember, we cut the center of that out. So not that we're going to use this today, but this is a great way to share what we're going to do. Let's see. How about we use this? Because this is pretty easy going for both sides. So we'll use that one first. And put all this together. And then for the other one, so we'll use that for... I'm going to do that one for the rectangles. And then for the nested, so just goes to show, you don't really have to use the nested necessarily with the birds. I'm trying to see which one I like both sides of that I think is going to work for both directions. Maybe this, we'll use this one. So it's got copper foil and then a pretty calm background on the other side. All right, so that one we'll do for that. Where is my other little brightly gleaming? I try to keep these. I don't have them... Um, 
this was I get, I cut myself into the paper share. <laughs> so I still have all my six by six pieces there. So I am going to do the paper share again for the occasions catalog. So kind of just keep that in mind if it was something that you might have missed out on. Um, I am going to do it again because it was very much easier to do than I anticipated. And actually, these kind of have very similar colors in them, which kind of worked out well. So I'm going to pick... I'm going to try to think. I don't know if I want to do Pretty Peacock or something a little bit lighter. Let me see what this one says. Pretty Peacock is for... They say Mint Macaron. I guess this could kind of go on mint. They could kind of go together. Yeah. So I'm going to do mint for this one, and then I'll do the um, Peacock paper for this one. I'm just talking myself through. Talking myself through a problem. So... Let's see, we have mint, but I, I was very concerned about the paper share that somehow I was going to utterly screw it up. So that's what took me so long to do one, but I really felt confident in the fact that I delivered faster than I promised. So I'm definitely going to do it again. So if you miss that, keep your eyes out and I will uh, do one again. Now I am going to go ahead and trim both of these papers down. Also, I'm supposed to get my trimmer on Friday, the new trimmer. So if I happen to get it in time before an appointment we have, I'll try and pop on with a live. If not, I'll definitely do something with it next week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trim this to four by five and a quarter. So we kind of start with the same base layer. And I'm going to do it for all the pieces that we have. So this is the peacock piece that we're going to use and which paper didn't you get you ordered more wood paper oh I know I love that wood paper I ordered an extra one too <laughs> I you know what's funny is they actually kept that paper I think it stayed on through two annual catalogs which really is unheard of I mean truly they usually don't keep anything that long but I think people liked it so much that they kept it around I think this one might that's four and I'm just cut this down to five and a quarter so I hear you I bought a lot of that paper too they do have on the back of one of these there is wood paper or wood background when they come together. So if you really do get desperate, the come together is a 12 by 12 um, paper pack. It's not six by six. So you would get two full sheets. So you could really cut it down if you needed to. But I know that's, you know, you may or may not want to buy a whole entire paper pack just for one side. But this paper, if you haven't seen it, I do have a video on the come together. It's actually really nice, has a great color combination. It's also very neutral. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a shape size out of here. So let's see. Might want to go down one from that because that's a little bit big. And again, you could do this vertically. Yeah, I'm going to go with the, so this is going to be, this is the largest. This is the second largest of the nested. So I'm going to do that for um, both of those. I'll do them the same size. And then let's see about the rectangle. And I don't want to do this too, too big or too small. Now, let me go one more. So that's two. I think I'm going to end up going with three on the rectangles. The rectangles have a ton of sizes, which is cool. Now, one more even. I think I'm going to go with four. Because I want it to have at least a little bit of space so we can use both of them. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. Also, one other thing I forgot I got, I forgot to share. I did order purple tape, so I'm going to use that and I'm going to see how um easy it is to use it versus and getting it off of the paper, especially with using the uh DSP, which is a little bit thinner. So we will use that today as well. All right. So I'm trying to make a little room here for the big shot. So I'm going to just do both of these and then I'll do both of the rectangles. So I have my magnetic platform, but you know, sometimes depending on the way you set that, it does or doesn't work out exactly like you think. So I'm only going to do one at a time. And then one other thing, and I'm going to back this up so I can show you this way. You want to make sure, and this is very 
specific, especially for the rectangle. You you don't want to put this through so it goes straight with this pressing part underneath. And I think that kind of goes with any die cutting machine because it puts a lot of pressure on the straight edge. So what you'll do is you kind of line it up the way you want it and then tilt it just a little bit. And this is why I said sometimes the magnet does or doesn't pick up correctly. So you may need to um, put just a little piece of purple tape. So that's about, if I smush my finger down one, it looks pretty much even. Could obviously get this, get out like a, a measuring tape if you wanted to. So I'm going to use just a little bit of this purple tape just to kind of stick it in place. And all right, so I'm going to run this through. Oops, too many things in the way. Thanks for sharing, everybody. Thank you so much. Your trimmer comes Friday, too. All right, so purple tape. I am going to do the same thing where I'm going to pull it away, but, oh, it's definitely very, comes off really easily, so that's good. So there's one, and then we'll do the same for this one. So I'm going to line this one up. So if you put it in this way, it's going to put a lot of pressure on that, so you definitely want to make sure that you kind of turn it just slightly. Doesn't even have to be a lot, just a little bit. You don't want to curl the edges there. So let's try this. Hello, Anita. You're the probably one of the only people that still has summer in South Florida. Because it is definitely chilly here. I know some people are saying they got snow already. I'm hoping we get a lot of snow this year. That'll be fun. All right, so there's that one. And then we're going to move on and do our rectangle. And again, I'm going to do my best to kind of eyeball this. You certainly could measure it if you want to, but I am definitely not the measuring person because if I did, somehow it would still... I think when I measure, I do a worse job of making things even than when I don't measure. So I'm just going to wing it like usual. <laughs> All right. Oh, the pedal DSP. That's good to know. I don't think I got that one because that was the annual catalog one. So, again, I, I'm definitely going to do a paper share for um, for the occasions catalog, but I'm, I'm even considering doing one for the annual catalog when it comes out next year as well. So, I'm going to put this through. Now, I am going to keep my Big Shot handy because I think I might emboss one of these especially maybe one of the uh the outside layers I might emboss it with something just to give it a little bit of a wow so there's those four and one other thing I am probably going to somehow die cut another rectangle or something so so anyway this purple tape worked really good I only had this little tiny piece I think this one is the two inch one and a half inch, one and a quarter inch, let's see, one and a half inch roll. So I got this from um, Simon Says Stamp. That's where I got that in the gouache. So I'm going to use these maybe for one of these. I think I'm going to do a base of vanilla and I'm going to use the thick, very vanilla since it's going to be a base. Oh, goody. I have one already ready. So let's see. So we'll do that for one. Figure that out. Let's see. For this one, this had the stripes. I think this one I'm going to do thick whisper white. Maybe I'll get lucky and have another one for that. Potentially, maybe. We'll see. There's that. And then I'm going to... So for one of these, I'm going to do um, a pretty peacock face. And then for the last one, we're just going to kind of see where we end up time-wise. Here's a crosswise base. So, woohoo. Let me just score this real quick so I don't forget. Whoop, that's not right. <laughs> Stop myself there. So, four and a quarter. Is this by five and a half? Yep, okay. And let me see if this one has it or not. Nope. Do this one too. Five and a quarter. Or five and a half. Let's see if this is at four and a quarter. Yep. Okay. So <clears throat> now what we're going to do is kind of just decide what our layout's going to be for these. So we have these three bases thus far. And I'm going to just for the sake of 
So you can see, I'm gonna do them here, even though I know they're not gonna necessarily be on top of the paper correctly. So if we did one like that, and one like this, now that I'm gonna have to change because we could technically do that and then maybe, this is gonna be too much here, hold on, let me see. This is probably gonna be the hardest part at this point is deciding what side we want for what. So you could also omit the, like the layering these two together so you could end up making two different cards. So you could have not layering these in between. So you could have a um, the, the outer stitch and then we could stamp something on the inside directly or we could stamp it on a white piece and pop it up. But, or you could take your opposite piece and lay it in and just do an inlay since we cut that out of it. So we'll make a decision about this later. Um, with this one, you could kind of do the same thing. You could layer the make sure I have that right layer sticking up. You could layer the opposite one inside if you wanted to. For this, what I think I'm going to do for this, only because of the color, and I kind of think the contrast of that, I really didn't think those two colors would go together very well, but it actually looks pretty nice. You could always do the opposite side. I don't really like that as much, believe it or not, even though those colors do match. So I think this looks nicer. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll put a... Um, do a smaller sentiment and do something on it. So I have these two left. So what I'm gonna try to do for these two, I'm gonna try to do two separate cards. So I have one that's, these two are definitely gonna be layering into each other and I'm gonna try to do these two as just using the frame and then just using the inside frame. I'll see if I can use the other side. I'm not sure about that one or not. We'll see what that looks like. But I wanna show you one other thing too. So let me just grab, just for the sake of it, I'm gonna grab another piece of thick whisper white and I'm just going to use that for both of those pieces that way it'll be easier and hopefully we can get all six of these finished so I'm going to go ahead and score this at five and a half again this is thick whisper white I think when you use a base for whisper white you definitely want to use the thick and then we cut it at four and a quarter so that gives us two more bases so then we'll do something with this one I don't know I might I'm not sure if I'm going to use this side or not so I think we're going to do this side again here and then we'll use the outside stitch shape so one other thing I wanted to show you and I did this the other day by accident because I was just kind of fooling around with this as I did it and I thought it was a really good idea just as a, another added thing that you could do with these I had just a scrap of um silver foil circle and what I did was I ran the die through it. So then you could have the same thing where you use like part of the circle. So you could punch out a circle and then die cut inside. And then what I ended up doing was I die cut another one. Now granted, I know this is a lot of the same color on color, but you could do this over here. You could do it with white. That way you could see it a little bit better. You could do it with peacock and then kind of layer the silver on top of it up on a dimensional. But you could also do the same thing if you have little scraps of foil. So just again, I just did a punch and then I laid the die cut inside. So you could even do this with punches and then lay a die in them for another use of something. So we'll see if we can incorporate that in there as well. And... Yeah, I know about the whole thing with the tabby thing. So I'm hoping, I saw that too, Don. I'm hoping that works out a little easier than I think it's going to. Okay, so for this thus far, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring, I'm going to do this one first. Actually, I'm going to do these two first. So I'm going to stamp something. And I think I'm going to punch them out with a circle punch, add it to that, and then kind of decorate it. So we'll do gather together for one and season of thanks for the other. Again, these aren't these are Christmas papers, but I think still with the color combination, they go really well that they work together. So I'm gonna grab gather together and season of thanks, and then I'm gonna decorate the background of them with the other stamps that are in that same stamp set. And I'm just gonna grab a scrap of white. I'm going to put this um, maple leaf onto something. Let's see. 
and I'll do the wheat onto something. I'm going to even do the pumpkins just while we're at it, just to have a bunch of choices in case I'm not really sure what I want to use. I have these little dots, maybe a little too, no, they fit on there good enough. They're just barely on there. So we have the dots and let's see if I can get one for the pumpkins. We'll just do the pumpkins. All right, so let me grab some Whisper White Scrap. So here's a little bit. I do have handy, just as FYI, I have the two inch punch and then I have the two and a quarter inch punch. So we will figure out which one works best for this. So again, I'm gonna kind of stick with the same similar colors. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Mint Macaron and the Pretty Peacock. And I think quite honestly, where is it? It's right in front of me. I think you could also use soft sea foam because they kind of go similarly. So we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna move these over just for a second. I know this one is also on vanilla. Um, the base is vanilla, so we could certainly swap that out as well. And as a matter of fact, it is vanilla here on a white base, but I think it still will work well enough. So we're gonna leave that alone. So what I'm going to do is put these to the side. I'm going to do kind of two in one. So I'm going to grab my mat. This is always helpful when you're stamping on um, a hard desk or hard service and you have a photopolymer stamp because it gives it some cushion. So I'm going to kind of just turn this around. I'm not even going to re-ink it every single time. Okay, and I'm going to, you know what, I should have grabbed my scrap paper. Look at that, quarter leans. <laughs> my scrap paper, Disney scrap paper. <laughs> oh goodness, I miss Disney and I've been too many times this year to complain. So I'm gonna do my mint macaron, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink it and just because it's a little soft, I'm going to ink it, stamp it off, and then stamp it on here. That way it's not too dark. Let me see what it looks like a second time. Not too bad. Do one more. All right, so we'll leave that there. Put this over here. And then I'm going to add in my sentiment. So I'm going to do two. I'm going to see if I can somehow manage to punch two out of this together. So we'll do gather together over here. And then I'm gonna do this one more time because I only have three over here. All right, and then, I'm just trying to close this up. Then I'm gonna do season of thanks. Hopefully they'll be spaced out enough. I'll be able to punch two of them, we'll see. Season of thanks here, I may need to get a smaller punch because I don't think I can get two two inch punches <laughs> out of this you never know maybe but so that one would be there let's see where this one is I'm going to do this one first just because it's a little closer to the edge and I think I may overlap so real quick I'm going to grab just one smaller punch quarters. Let me see if this works. It should fit my grating in there. All right, so I'm going to go, I moved down to one and three quarters for this one. And yeah, that's much better. I definitely wouldn't be able to fit both of those. Gather together. So there are both of those. So then I'm going to do one more thing. And I'm trying to think if I have a piece because we could technically pop this out of here if we cover that up, but I'm afraid I'm going to cut it too close. I'm going to grab two, um, two pieces of scrap and we're going to cut out just a couple of these leaves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly what I meant. I'm going to grab a piece of, um, silver foil. So with my foil, what I started doing was I was keeping it, um, I had it keep kept in big sleeves, but I got the, um, 
the six by six paper holder from Stampin' Storage. So I cut it in sixes and I find that I use it a little bit more. So let me just look at this real quick just to see what the, if it will fit this piece. Sometimes you need a little help getting this in. So it's really close, but it's close. It's, it barely fits on there, this punch. So I'm going to punch this out. And technically you have just this little square piece here where it didn't fit, but I'm not going to worry about that. So I have that punch. I'm going to put this piece in it. And then I'm going to do another one just on a uh, little scrap piece here. Because I have a piece that's probably... Oh, here's another good one. This one's already punched out as a circle. So I'm going to see. That's almost too big. But I'm going to use it anyway. Because it is just... It fits on there pretty much exactly. So I'm going to do those... And then I'm going to grab just a couple pieces of regular cardstock so we could use a piece of mint. I have two little pieces here. We could even bring in a piece of, um, just to kind of give like a little offset color. Hold on, that's definitely not the right color. Let's see what this looks like. Sometimes Sahara sand can be a color that sneaks up on you in a very unusual way. I'm going to do Sahara sand. I'm just going to do a couple things out of that. I don't know if it's just me. Does anybody else have trouble using Sahara sand? Sometimes when you use it, it's just the most unusual color. So I'm going to just punch out. This is a two inch circle. And then I'm going to do a one and a three quarter inch circle. All right, and then let me close these up. All right, so I'm going to put these through the big shot. I'm going to do the foil ones first and this one circle, and then I'll do the rest of them. So since you get multiple leaves, you can run these three at the same time. And when you have your um, your regular cardstock, not your foil necessarily, and this almost cuts so close that you see the thing is kind of coming apart. But if we layer this down correctly, we could probably use it for something else. If not, we did get a center out of it, so that's fine. But if you spritz the regular cardstock with a little bit, just a very light spritz of water, it actually will give you a really deep impression. So I'm actually going to do that. And I have, let's see, what do I have? Do I have any that don't have color? Yeah. I'm going to just do it with the um, alcohol and the shimmer. So we'll see what it looks like. So I'm going to give this a little spray and then I'm going to cut that one. And I'm going to put these down on the mint and I'll just run both of these through at the same time as well. So let me do this. Okay. Put this on. Just hoping it stays wet long enough that it works. <laughs> because the alcohol does tend to dry a little bit faster. But it's kind of like the same thing if you spray your... Um, paper when you put it through a folder it gives you a deeper impression so you can see just from the two of those and again this was just with water this one with the alcohol spray has a much deeper impression than the dry one so just a little something to try so here's two more of those leaves and again that was just the champagne shimmer mist and it's in mixed in with alcohol just um isopropyl alcohol Okay, let me scoot these over. All right, so we have these little doodads. So let's put these couple cards together. Let me move this so it's out of the way. I don't want to block the light. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put these together. I am going to use liquid glue. That way I can assure myself that I line these up the way I like and they're not crooked. Okay, so make sure you have the correct stitch, st stitched side showing up. So this side here, you can see the poke holes. So you want to make sure that you can see through it pretty well when you do it. So just take a look before you adhere it down. 
because they definitely have a little bit of, it kind of looks a little bit rougher if you use the wrong side. I'm kind of eyeballing this. Good thing about the glue is you can move it around if you don't exactly like where it is. Not for very long, but you can move it around. What we could do with this one, oh, we could even use this side of it, which is super pretty as well, but I'm going to stick with this side. You could um, put this up on dimensionals if you wanted to, but I think I'm actually going to do that with the pop-out leaves. So I'm going to flip this over. <laughs> so used to taking the cap off on that. And just nestle this inside. Okay. There's that. Give this a fold. Okay. And then you can kind of decide which of your leaves you want to put there. So we could put the outline of this one. Whoop, that's the wrong leaf. <laughs> outline of, here's one. This one. This is the tinier one though, I think. With this. We can add a different leaf like that, and then we will put our sentiment here. So let's do that. I am going to do one more thing. I'm going to grab my Sahara Sand marker, and I'm just going to outline. It doesn't have to be hard. Just kind of go around the shape of the circle, just like that. All right, so I'm going to put pop one of these up these the sentiment and the leaf I will pop up together and this one I'm going to put flat so I'm going to do the same thing just putting <laughs> still keep taking the cap off just putting this down you could lay these down at the same time if you feel confident that you have them in where you want them or you could do them separately so I kind of put that there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a glue dot and I'm going to put this on the leaf, kind of hook this on the back here like that. Still can probably scoot this up a little, yeah, a little bit if I need. I want to go up just a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to grab, I have a very little bit of dimensionals left on this one sheet. So I'm just going to snip this, turn this over, put one here, here, and one more. Come on. All right, and we'll put that like right. You know, we don't want it hanging too far off the card, but oh, that's crooked. There we go. So there's one. Again, we did use both pieces of it for that. We didn't do anything with the outside of that one, though. We kind of just left it as is. So for the second one, I'm actually going to run this through. Oh, hopefully I don't topple anything over. I'm going to run this through the Subtles folder. This is the inside piece just to change it up just a little bit. And thank you. Thank you for the color. Purple tape I got at Simon Says Stamp. So that is um, a place where you can get some other, they got lots of other stuff there. I won't even get into everything that they have. They have tons of stuff there. But I get, um, I usually will order stuff at the same time from there. So just as a FYI, when you're using this big embossing folder because it's thicker, you want to go to your regular platform, put this in, kind of just decide. With the subtles, you don't have to make it exact. And then you only need one plate to go over top of it, okay? So since this is thicker, just FYI. But I get, um, I also got thick acetate because I've been wanting to make, and then you can see that looks really cool. I've been wanting to make a, um, an acetate base card and Stampin' Up! doesn't carry a thick acetate. So what I did was, let me scoot this up just a little bit. What I did was I ordered, um, a couple things at the same time. So I got the purple tape. I got the acetate. Oh, that even looks pretty. I feel bad covering this up, but I'm going to go with my original plan of what I said. I forgot how pretty the other side of this paper was. I got the gouache. Um, what else do I get from there? 
the envelope addressing pens. You can get there. You can also get them sometimes a little bit cheaper on Amazon. And a lot of times, too, you can kind of find a coupon for Simon Says Stamp, and then you can get almost, not all, not exactly free shipping, but you can get pretty reduced shipping. So keep that in mind, too. It's always worth, like, checking for a coupon code on, um, I just usual, usually Google search wherever it may be. So this is kind of neat because the way this is with the paper, it almost, because this is embossed, it makes it looks like look like it's lifted on dimensionals, even though it's not. So it really gives a nice 3D effect, which I think is really cool. So same thing on this one. So I'm going to use this little piece one here that we kind of pieced together. So I'm going to actually put this down first because I'm going to need to move that end a little bit. And then I'm going to put this on the inside, but I'm going to pop it up. So it doesn't really matter exactly if it doesn't um, line up. So I'll put this one over here. And actually, we could even change this to a, a, a landscape orientation. So this will be here. I'm just going to try to make sure this is mostly lined up. But then I'm going to take this piece and put it up on dimensionals. Let me grab another pack. I'll just use the minis for this. You don't have to. It's just whatever I had handy. I've also gotten some um, really nice watercolor paper over the years. I also recently got a different black um, card stock because I heard it's a really nice black card stop that stock that really has a deep black feel to it so I got that and let me see I want to put this down with a couple glue dots on here so I do buy for the majority and I'll put one little um dimensional under here I do buy probably 99% of the stuff that I use from Stampin' Up. But occasionally, if there's something that they don't carry, I will get it from somewhere else. And then this one, I'm just going to put the gather together. I'm going to put um, a couple dimensionals on the one side where I feel like it needs to stick up a little bit. And then a little bit of glue on the other side. Did I do that right? No, of course not. It needs to be over here. I'll hopefully be down enough that it'll work together. Rainbow Stamper went on his first field trip today. I'm a little nervous. Here I am making cards and he's on a field trip. Mm -hmm. So that's cute. Easy card. Again, doesn't have like a whole lot of sentiment here. So it's very minimal. We're just using the inside and the outside without trying to make it too overwhelming. So there are two of those. So I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I'm going to go ahead real quick and run this through the subtle embossing folder. I'm sure he'll be fine. He's in very capable hands, but you know, I'm sure anytime anybody sent their, their child on a, uh, a trip without them, it's got to be unnerving, right? Where is that? Oh my goodness, I'm trying to follow along with my video. I just lost all the comments. So I'm sorry, I'm not ignoring you. Facebook thought I didn't need to see anything anymore. Make sure, yes, I still actually am live. So I went put that one through the Subtles folder. If you don't have the Subtles folder, also just as a side note, it is a really nice investment because you can make things look so different with really minimal effort. I mean, like minimal, minimal effort. Let's see. All right, there I am again. So I'm going to put this one on here. And what I'm going to do for this is I'm actually going to stamp the background for this part. We'll see how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, if I can find where one is real quick, I'm going to take just a pencil and just make a little mark. So I know where I want to stay inside of. Okay, so I'm going to open this back up. Grab my mat again. 
because we're gonna fill this in. So what we'll do is we're gonna fill this in with all these little things in variances of color. So I'm going to do, I have soft sea foam. I'm gonna do the leaf, the big maple leaf in soft sea foam. Again, this is a pretty light color. So usually when you stamp it the second time, it's really, really light. So if you don't like that, you definitely wanna stick with full ink for that. I'm gonna bring in just a few of the little dots. I'll bring those over. I'm gonna do those in full ink kind of around where I was, close up that one. Then I'm gonna move on to mint, mint macaron. And I'm just gonna put just the pumpkins in, but I'm going to, what did I do with my paper? I'm gonna stamp these off first because they are a little bit dark. I probably shouldn't have my ink pad on the base card. That's probably not a good idea. And just kind of put these just like that so just two of those what else do I have here my dots I have the wheat and I'm gonna do the wheat I'll do that actually I'm gonna do that in Sahara sand just to see what it looks like so I'm gonna do the same thing with this so I'm inking it and then I'm gonna stamp it off stamp it off twice and see Okay, so I think two and three are the nicest. This, again, is a very unusual color, Sahara Sand. If you've never used it before, it is really... I don't want to say it's odd, but it's definitely not what you think it's going to look like. Not for me, anyway. I always find that what it looks like and what I thought it was going to look like are not remotely the same. All right, so we'll leave it at that. And then, lastly... I'm going to put the sentiment in Pretty Peacock, but I'm going to put the frame on first just so I can kind of assure myself of where I lined it up just to be sure. So let's see. So we have, let's see, do I want to use something different? How about wishing you well? We'll use something different for this one. We'll just do wishing you well and we'll do it straight kind of across the middle. And since I haven't used this stamp before, I just want to ink this oops, and stamp it off. And I also have a scrap. Worst case scenario, if it doesn't look good, we can uh, overlay it with something else. Remember that you can always cover it up. Nobody knows it wasn't intended to be that way. So just take a look. With the photopolymer, it's nice too because you can kind of line it up. Wish I had more space here because I could uh, stick my head in there. Hopefully that's straight. Ah, not bad actually. Okay, so now I'm going to take and I'm going to grab my uh, really good eraser for ink and pencil. This is a mono eraser. One side, if you make a whoopsie, you can actually erase ink with the sand side and the other side is just a rubber, so a rubber eraser. So I'll make sure that this is you definitely want to make sure it's dry. And just gently erase. I believe also uh, Simon Says Stamp sells these. However, I got mine on Amazon because it was cheaper. So what I try to do is if I'm making an order from another company, I try to make it worth my while. That way I get everything shipped. And honestly, even that by itself, this is going to be covered up right here, this little smudge. But I'm going to show you here just in case. You do have to be careful because it actually does sand off a layer of the paper. So you don't want to sand too hard because the next thing you know, you'll be like, wait, I can see through that. But it does erase ink pretty well. So this is really pretty, even if we didn't put a layer on it. So it's kind of a neat idea to do like a frame and then you're stamping into it. So we will just frame this, make it look a little bit more put together. Again, make sure you're using the correct side of your frame because if you put it on the opposite way, you'll have those little bumpy pieces sticking out. Flip this over. And quite honestly, we really don't even need to add anything to this. I think this is pretty. We could add a leaf if we wanted to. Like if you really felt like you wanted to, would look pretty. Looks nice without it. So either way, I think this is just a teeny bit crooked. I want to scoot that over just a smidge. 
and I'm going to put one on just for the heck of it since I have it here, but you could go either way. Just going to put one dimensional. <laughs> Gail, did you find your house yet? I know Gail's moving. She'll be back though. She won't be leaving us. She'll just be broadcasting from another state. So there's another pretty one. And then we have this one over here. So for this one, what we'll do is actually the opposite. So we will take this and kind of line this up where we want it. I like the stripes, but I just don't know if I love them enough to use them. So let's see. Looks pretty good there. So I'm going to once again just take my pencil and I'm going to put just a corner. This one, it doesn't really matter, but you don't want to waste your time stamping the inside of it since it's not going to show. So what we'll do for this one is we will do some pumpkins and mint macaron. And this one, since it's a little bit darker, this piece is a little bit darker, I'm actually going to use this full strength. So I'm going to just put some random pumpkins. Let me put my paper back here. Do one down at the bottom. And do some, just to change it up. And I probably should wipe this off first. I'm going to clean this off real quick. Do this with um, Sahara sand, the leaf, the maple leaf. And again, I'm going to do this with full strength ink. It's a little bit um, more bold of a piece of paper that we're using, the DSP. So I feel comfortable with using full strength ink. However, I'm also going to do two in lighter ink. One, I'm not going to re-ink, I'll just do it two just to kind of mix that up a little bit. So we only really, we have our soft sea foam. We can add in, of course, a little bit more of the uh, wheat with that. And I wanna do one more here. So I'm actually gonna fold this. That way it kinda comes in from the top a little bit as well. There we go. And I'll do my dots in Pretty Peacock. So just the little dots that we have. Some full ink, some stamped off and filled in. There we go, that's good enough because I don't want to overkill it. And then we still do need to add, whoops, got a big splotch of ink on my finger. I didn't want that to add up, end up anywhere. So we're gonna add this one here. If that's too busy, we could go to the softer one. It could go either direction, remember that. And I do still want to erase those little pencil marks, but I'm gonna give it another minute to dry. So I think I'm gonna go with this. I think I did that enough that it's a lot, so we're gonna make that smaller. So let me grab a piece of Whisper White. And I'm gonna do the, um, the sentiment in Pretty Peacock, just to kind of stand out since there's not as much Pretty Peacock on there. And we'll do, where is my other? Here's Season of Thanks. I'm gonna do Season of Thanks again. All right, so Season of Thanks. And I'm gonna punch that. Where is my little punch? I moved all my stuff out of the way. My one and three quarter inch punch. And what we can do is, we can kind of lay these together. So you'll see that little leaf outline. And we could even add in, I think we still have one more. I don't know if this matches now. This one doesn't match exactly, but. You can kind of lay those 
together still. I think it'll look cute. We'll try that one. We'll see what it looks like. If you don't like it, you can change it. That way you can see what it looks like without having to use your supplies. Okay, and one other thing I want to do. Where's my eraser? Just erase these. Can't even see that one. What'd be, oh, there it is underneath the pumpkin. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put this down. I can kind of still see where the lines were a little bit. Okay. Put this over here. Put a little bit on here. And, oops, that foil, <laughs> the foil will foil you. You have to be careful with the foil and give it a good press. That's why I like using the liquid glue because I think sometimes it doesn't stick as well as you think it's going to. And let me grab a big dimensional just because it'll be easier. It's a little, here we go. And I'm going to do three on the back of this. I kind of wish with this one, I know they have the ribbon as well, but I kind of wish they would have had some embellishments to go along with this one because this is a great suite. There we go. So again, this one could have done that. You could change it this way if you wanted to as well. So now that I'm looking at it, the pumpkins are going um, a different direction. So let's just turn this a little bit have sideways pumpkins. I didn't even look at that. Did anybody else notice that? <laughs> oh, so my glue stand. These are from um, Lisa and her husband, John, make them. There's a shameless plug for them, Crafter Solution. You can find them on Etsy and on Facebook. There you go. And if Lisa's on here or anyone who else is friends with Lisa, you're welcome to add her um, store to tag it from. So there's another one. <laughs> Sideways pumpkins. <laughs> you did, Jean. I probably wasn't paying attention if someone was shouting, the pumpkins are sideways. At least I, I recognized it before it was like fully adhered, right? So that's still better than nothing. All right, so we have one. I'm going to pull in the other ones. Two. Three. Four. All right, let me check the time. Oh, we only have like two minutes left. All right, I'm going to see if I can fin finish this last one this was one where we were going to do the double so we'll at least have five five cards so i'm going to scoot these up again because i was trying to get to that last one we'll finish up this last card i think these turned out really nice though and i think um again thanks donna for the idea because she told me this a while back it would be like really fun to be able to to do this so for the last one since i've done it for the rest of them i'm just going to run this through the embossing folder again so once again, it's the subtle folder. The nice part too is, I don't know if this is what it's designed for or not, but if you ever think that you have something that you want to get exactly lined up and you're not sure, I always use this bottom line. I don't really know if that's why it's there or not, but it works really well for getting something on the line if you're worried about it being straight. So I'm actually going to do this one this way, vertically instead, and then I'm just going to close it and run it through. I know, I Diana, I gave all those also to my um, stamp club people, and they loved them. Think They have such fabulous products. They have more than just that, too. And um, there we go. So we'll put that one there, and I'm gonna just going to add a sentiment to it. But I'm going to do one with a little bit bigger of a punch. But they're really, really cool. I think they're super helpful. And I will tell you, I never realized, however, you get way more glue out of your... Um, glue bottles when they're tipped that direction so this one we could do the same thing because we have this one was cut out from here so just for the heck of it I'm actually going to use this one I'm going to pop it up on dimensionals though maybe turn it a little bit to the side and I think I have one more so I'm going to use this too and the only other thing I need to do is make a sentiment so let me just grab I thought I had a piece of here's my piece of whisper white so I'm going to do one more and Let's see, how about we do, 
This is from um, Magnolia. Good morning, Magnolia. Let's do thinking of you. Oop, not in there. <laughs> Must be in the other case. There it is. So let's do thinking of you. Just because this could be more than just a Thanksgiving card or a fall card. We could make this for pretty much any occasion. Let me pull this one off. And I'm going to do... Hmm... I think I'm actually going to stamp this sentiment in Sahara sand. And then what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of stuff around it in a little bit lighter color. So I want to do this one a little bit bigger. So I'm going to move up here. Just stuck my finger in the ink pad again. <laughs> All right. So we'll do pretty peacock. I'm going to do for the dots, but I'm going to stamp them off so they're a little bit lighter. So that's good enough. And I'm just going to add like one more thing. I'm going to do soft sea foam because I think it's nice and light. And I'm going to do the grass. Okay, soft sea foam. I don't think it's grass. The wheat, I guess I should call it. There we go. So that's good enough. Don't want to overdo it. I can always add some ink with a marker if I feel like it needs more. So let me grab, I don't want to do the two and a quarter. I'm going to do the two inch punch for that. Bring it in. Another fun thing you can do with this is, what did I do with my spray? I'm going to spray this with the shimmer spray. I'm going to spray this again too in case I didn't do this. I couldn't remember. One other thing too, I just want you to know this. Sometimes when you first spray something, first of all, they do curl. But it can almost make your ink look like it ran. So I'm going to heat this just a little bit, just to dry it out slightly. But once it dries, it doesn't look run anymore. So when you first do it, sometimes it almost makes it look like the ink ran and you're like, oh my gosh, because it was still wet, but it usually works out fine. All right, so let's just pop this last one together. Move this out of the way. And doo -doo -doo, which one didn't I use on that? Mint. I'm just going to take my mint marker and just outline it. Like sometimes I think like the fall, um, the fall sets could almost use a, um, like buttons. You remember how you had the buttons and you could like add a little button through it. I think that looks really cute. You could put some baker's twine in it as well, or, um, linen thread would be cute. All right. So last thing, I'm going to just grab my glue, put this on so I can assure that it is even. And again, you do have that little option to kind of move it a little bit for a second if you don't like the way it is. Just be careful because once you set it, it kind of stays. I think this is the not as good side. So if you would like to get all these supplies, you can head to my online store, rachethestamper.stampinup.net. You can get all the stuff here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, let's see. Oh, you know what? Just for a little flare, since we're like at the end of whatever we're doing here today, I'm going to use a little bit of the uh, come together ribbon. I'm just going to put like a little bit behind, just a little something or other. There we go. So this comes in this, and then you also get Cajun Craze. By the way, you could definitely add some Cajun Craze into this, and it would look really, really pretty, I think. Because it would be like a complete opposite color than what we've already added. I'm going to add this. I just kind of put some Fast Fusel on the back of that. Oh, I didn't want it going that way. And added it to the back. Just like that. Just for a little something. So what I'm going to do is I'm kind of putting this where I think I want it. And this one again, I am going to pop up. Yeah, I'm going to move this again. Hold on. 
I'd have to bring it over just a smidge. There we go. That's good. So I'm going to see kind of like this. So I'm going to put this one first with a dimensional. Okay, so I'm kind of using this to hold my place. So I'm just laying this down. And then, very carefully, I'm going to lift this around, put some glue on the back of this. This one's going to go get glued directly down. Also, remember, if you are a demonstrator, you are able to pre-order the Stampin' Trimmer. If you aren't a demonstrator, you could join and pre-order the Stampin' Trimmer. <laughs> but um, I will, as soon as I get my trimmer and I'm able to, I will definitely give you guys a nice, honest review of what I think of it. I know some people have said it's a little bit different to get used to because of the way the track lays. But I promise to give you my honest opinion Actually, I think I need one more over here because the way I put those dimensionals on. Let's say, yeah, one up here. So I will let you know what I think of it. I guess I got a little smudge on, but that's okay. If you want to subscribe for Paper Pumpkin, remember that October and November is like a double Christmas uh, conglomeration that you can use separately or you can make them together. Tomorrow is the last day to sign up for October Paper Pumpkin, the 10th. Uh, sometimes they do sell out and then you can't sign up for it at all. So make sure if it is something that you want to do that you try to sign up sooner versus later. Like tempted to add in this little thing, but all right, Rachel, enough. Enough is enough. It's enough. It's enough. <laughs> to talk myself through that there. Move these out of the way so you can see what's going on here. So tomorrow is the last day to sign up for that. And then there will be, if you sign up on the 11th, you can get the new paper pumpkin for December. Or not for December, for November. There we go. Also, um, I'm trying to think if there are any other specials coming up. The Everything is Rosy card kit is in the clearance rack while supplies last. It's not as clearance priced as normal things are, so just beware because they um, it is a very large kit, so it's not like one of those smaller kits. Of, it's a, a medley, so it's not really a kit. It's got lots of stuff in it, but it is in the clearance rack while supplies last. Be sure if you order it, unless you want it, there is a French and an English version, so be sure you pick the correct version. I think this would also have looked really nice, too, if we used um, copper paper, copper foil. I mean, that would look really pretty as well, I think. Um, simple, though. I think these cards are simple. They really could be very easy to make because a lot of them, we just did one little stamping and did some punching. Minimal die cutting, if that's not your thing. You could certainly omit that altogether. Um, so everything is rosy, but also real quick, in case you guys don't have a planner, there's a planner in the clearance rack. I think it's called Big Plans Planner. It's really cheap. So if you're like into maybe next year or you want to, I don't think it has dates on it so you can customize it. It looks like a really cool planner. I was actually thinking I might get one just to see what the inside looks like and then maybe I could um, give it away or something. But thank you guys as always for joining. I hope you enjoyed these cards and thanks again Donna for the great idea. If anybody else has any cards or styles you want to see made, feel free to shoot me an email, send me a message on Facebook. Um, I'm happy to take your requests. I hope you all know that by now. So if there's something you want to see done or made or whatever, you know, I will do my very best as long as I have the stamp set or if I'm it's on the order list to make something for you. I think these cards turn out really nicely. So they're very pretty and they look like they have a lot of effort. But you figure with no planning whatsoever, we made five cards. I granted it was a little bit over an hour, but that was like with thinking of an idea too. So now you already have an idea of what you could do. So thank you all so much for joining. Um, please, if you haven't already, go to my YouTube channel or my Instagram and subscribe. I really would appreciate it. The more people that you get on Instagram and YouTube, the more things you're able to do interactively with people. So that's why I ask people to join. Even if you never go on there, I would appreciate it. So thank you all so much. I will see you on one of those two uh, platforms later this week. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you here again on Facebook definitely next Wednesday at 930 Eastern Standard Time.
Thanks for watching.